The New Zealand dollar has been flirting with parity with the Australian currency since the start of the month. Analysts say it's likely to get there if Australia's Reserve Bank cuts interest rates next month. It's also fired up a long-running debate if you can swap one Australian dollar for one Kiwi dollar. Why not go the whole way and forge a trans-Tasman currency union? For more on this, I'm joined by Oliver Hartwich from New Zealand Initiative. He's joining me via webcam. Oliver Hartwich, we've seen what's happened with the euro. Is this a serious proposition? Well, hopefully it isn't, because we have also seen what happened in Europe once uh, different economies merged together to form a currency union. I'm afraid that a currency union for Australia and New Zealand would also be a bad idea because, as we can see now, the two economies are not in sync. They're moving in different directions. Australia has seen a weakening of its economy. New Zealand is definitely on the rise. We have different economic cycles. We have different exports with different cycles. So merging these two currencies together is only a recipe for disaster. Well, let's look more closely at the reasons the currencies are getting very close to parity. New Zealand's economy, as you say, is taking off and that's been pushing its currency much higher. Indeed, we have seen stronger growth rates um, in the past uh, than in Australia. We are seeing lower unemployment rates. We are seeing, of course, the end of the big Australian commodity cycle where the demand for hard commodities such as iron ore has plummeted. Whereas at the same time, we are seeing increased demand for New Zealand products, um, especially in dairy, but uh, also other agricultural products, fish, for example, lamb, beef. All of this is uh, strengthening the New Zealand economy at the same time that Australia is feeling the pressure. So you can clearly see that the same factors driving us towards parity are also the same reasons why we shouldn't go for currency union. How does China play into this? Because obviously China's demand for our commodities is weakening. But is China one of the main buyers of New Zealand's food commodities? Yes, absolutely. And we've had a free trade agreement with China now for seven years, and that's clearly played out well in New Zealand's favour. So at the start of the free trade agreement with China, New Zealand exports to China accounted for just about 1% of GDP. They're accounting for about 5% today. That means we have benefited massively from Chinese demand for our exports, and we've benefited from having a free trade agreement with China. Now, New Zealand did experience a recession following the global financial crisis like most uh, developed economies, whilst Australia didn't. Do you think that's had a bit of an impact in how quickly its economy is uh, picking up now as opposed to Australia's just muddling through? Well, I think there are a number of factors at play. One factor is probably the fact that we had a recession. The other one is that we had a major earthquake in Canterbury, which of course now means that we have a major rebuild going on in that region. But we also had very good government under the leadership of Prime Minister John Key and his finance minister Bill English. We have seen tax cuts. We have seen part privatizations of some companies. We have seen reforms, major reforms in the welfare state. And I think we, with all of that combined, we are seeing a very strong commitment to leading the budget back to surplus, whereas, of course, in Australia, that's not the case. So do you think there's some lessons to learn uh, from New Zealand for our government at the moment heading into the budget? Yes, absolutely. And in fact, I published a little essay with the Menzies Research Centre last year where I argued that there is a specific style of government that John Key has implemented, a government style that is characterised by patience, by preparation, by pragmatism and by principles. And if you take all of these lessons on board from the key government, this great patience of actually designing reforms, communicating them and then implementing them, there is definitely something for Tony Abbott to learn. Oliver Hartwich, thank you very much for your insights. Thank you.